About a year ago, my grandson came over to me while I was bent over my grill working on another batch of Memorial Day hamburgers. As he stood there, juggling a football in his hands, his curiosity erupted and he started asking me a lot of questions about my time in Vietnam. He said his eighth grade history teacher was explaining to the class the other day the difference between Veterans Day and Memorial Day. When he told his teacher that his papa was a helicopter pilot in the Vietnam War, the teacher told Manny, you know, my father served in the Vietnam War too. He was an infantry soldier. He was only 19 years old when he served. The teacher then went on to tell the class that he calls the Vietnam War the sad war. Curious why he said that, Manny raised his hand and said to his teacher, because so many people and soldiers die in a war, I thought all wars were sad. So why do you call the Vietnam War the sad war? His teacher responded saying, that's a good question, Manny, and you're right, all wars are sad. But I think historically, the Vietnam War should be called the saddest of all of our country's wars, even the Civil War. Why? because so many of the soldiers who survived that war were treated so badly when they came home. The teacher went on to explain to the class. You remember I told you how my dad was an infantryman and fought in that war? Well, he was wounded very badly and received a purple heart. My mom said it took him a long time to recover physically, but unfortunately, he never recovered from his wounds mentally. That helped me understand as a child why whenever I would ask my dad about what happened to him during his time in Vietnam, he always seemed to get really sad. He never wanted to talk about it much. I could see it in his eyes and on his face. That's why I later decided to call the Vietnam War the Sad War. Well, after Manny told me that story about what his teacher had said in class, he then went on to fire away at me with dozens of pretty good questions. And for a 14-year-old, he seemed pretty eagerly attentive to each of my answers. But the last question he asked got to me. It really got to me. It hit me hard. It made me take a quiet pause and think. I then thought about what that teacher had said to that class about Vietnam being the sad war. For a moment, I just stood there, staring off into the distant. My mind had suddenly flooded with long ago memories. My eyes began to mist over, and I felt my voice weakening. But I turned to answer Manny's question. Yes, Manny, I did lose a very good friend of that war. We were close buddies. And when I think about his sudden loss, it too makes me feel very sad. Sit down over here for a minute and I'll tell you all about him. As we combat veterans pass through this day, another of the 
many Memorial Days we have been through since our return back to the world, some of us will be thinking once again of one of the most devastating moments in our life. The sudden and shocking loss of a dear friend killed in a split second of violent combat. And when it comes roaring forth in our head, many of us can't stop that terrible memory. That tragic moment we experienced excruciating emotional pain. That moment that wounded our soul. That moment that dimmed our spirit. That moment that for some of us burdened our mind with unbearable feelings of guilt. So with all that now said, I want to dedicate a few words to those of my fellow combat veterans who are on this Memorial Day also thinking about the memory of a dear lost friend, a combat buddy, a brother from another mother. These words are for you. Today is but a heartfelt day filled with measured memories of a special friend found in my youth, a friend found fondly and truly treasured. Today is but a dreadful day filled with saddened tender tears for my special friend lost in my youth, a friend lost loudly in his yearning years. This hard day is my Memorial Day. And as we all share in this moment of solemn memory for those best of our friends, our battle buddies fallen and wars past, I say, hear ye, hear ye, all Americans present, to those families who have suffered the loss of a dear loved one, a husband, a wife, a brother, a sister, a father, a mother. May you find peace in your eternal memories of love. And to those veterans who have suffered the sad loss of a comrade in arms, a dear and beloved friend, a battle buddy and brother, never to be forgotten. May you find peace in your fondest memories. And finally, to those men and women who gave selflessly all there is to give to their beloved country, may you find peace in your eternal rest. I say all these things too, in memory of my dear friend and battle brother, lost in a bitter fight to the death over the skies of South Vietnam. His name? Chief Warrant Officer Glenn S. Harkness, Jr., Mustang gunship pilot extraordinaire, known by all his fellow Army aviators as the Hawk, and to his courageous crewmen lost that same day with him. Chief Warrant Officer Robert A. Williams, his loyal co-pilot. Sergeant Richard D. Baca, his dedicated crew chief. And Specialist for Alan Mike Rouchon, his fierce and deadly door cunner. Courageous Army aviators all of the 68th Assault Helicopter Company, known as the Top Tigers and Mustangs. God bless you all. Before I conclude my thoughts on this 
my 54th Memorial Day since my service in Vietnam, I want to pay tribute to my fellow airmen of the 68th Assault Helicopter Company by stating the names of the 32 men killed in action. May their names never be forgotten. Chief Warrant Officer Ronald J. Kinkeed. Chief Warrant Officer Daniel A. Lambden. Spec 4 David A. Dillon. Spec 4 Walter R. Tate Jr. PFC Richard G. Kittner. Captain Charles S. Abel. Spec 4 Kenneth R. Birch. Warrant Officer Edwin R. Higgins. Spec 4 John N. Sheffield. Warrant Officer James Paul Barton. Spec 4 Johnny L. Washburn. Spec 4 Gilbert N. Smith. Warrant Officer John P. Marlowe. First Lieutenant Thomas D. Babin, Jr. Spec 5, Richard D. Lakin. Warrant Officer Paul J. Hill. Warrant Officer Charles C. Van Allen. Spec 4, Brady W. Herring. Warrant Officer Norman W. Partridge. PFC. Samuel R. Summerfield, Chief Warrant Officer Glenn S. Harkness, Jr., Chief Warrant Officer Robert A. Williams, Sergeant Richard D. Baca, Spec 4 Alan M. Rouchon, Warrant Officer Noel K. Garrison, Spec 5 Charles A. Romero, Chief Warrant Officer David A. Hickman, Specialist 5 Joseph A. Velez Hernandez, Sergeant Roy L. Royston, Spec 4 Robert W. Kerr, Spec 4 Carl W. Titus, and Spec 4 Michael G. Warnick. Good men all, may you rest in eternal peace. Know that you are not forgotten.